Afternoon, Jacob Klein, I'm going to be an instructor today. Uh, we're going to go over the electrical system of the R22. Um, to start off, uh, what impact would your life have? Uh, what impact on your life would a complete lack of electrical power have? No cell phones, computers, TVs, internet, etc. If there were an R22 running when the power disappeared, what would happen to it? Um, as you can see, electricity is a vital and indispensable keystone of our lives, and as pilots, it's vital we understand how it affects us and how to troubleshoot our systems for safe flight operation. Um, today we're going to focus on the two sources of power, which is the battery and the alternator, um, the users of power, fuses and breakers, and their purpose, and problems possible, and how to fix them. Um, so for electrical basics, in every electrical system, we usually have two systems of power, or two sources of power, I'm sorry, um, wiring and the users. Um, the bigger the helicopter, the larger and more complex the systems will become. The R22 is pretty simple, though. Um, this makes it easy to start out, um, easy to be your first aircraft to start to learn the electrical systems with. Um, first off, electrical sources. Um, the first source we'll cover is the battery. In the Beta 2, the battery is behind the left hand seat uh, in the engine compartment. Um, it's about the size of a riding mower's battery and it's under like a gray cowling. Uh, we'll show you that later as we go out to the aircraft. Uh, it's 12 volt and has a current of 25 amps. Um, the battery is required to start the engine. Uh, it also has a temporary backup for the electrical components in flight if the engine should fail. You got like five or ten minutes, but definitely less than ten minutes. Um, they like they like to teach I think less than five minutes is what you have to land. So that's use that as your safe number. Um, the battery is recharged by the alternator. Um, and the master switch controls the power from the battery to everything except for the clock and the clutch, which we'll cover in a few minutes. So, the other electrical source is the alternator. The, the alternator charges at 14 volts and it runs at 60 amps. Um, you can see the difference between the battery of a 2 volt increase and the amperage, which is a, what is that, 35 volt in, or amp increase. Uh, what this difference does is helps to charge the battery during flight. That way you can run all of your accessories and still be recharging the battery which you discharge during the start which is uh, a high draw of amperage. So components in the electrical system um, start out there's kind of basic the wires of course uh, the wires are they they run everything as short as possible and they also use the chassis for ground because it eliminates a whole a whole extra set of wires that would take up extra weight. Uh, switches. Switches control the circuit for the component that they are associated with. You turn the switch off, it means that you're opening a circuit. Um, a basic electrical circuit switch. They'll show it like this on a diagram. And this little lever up shows that the switch is open. There's no connection made, therefore the electricity can't flow. A closed switch, sorry, a closed switch will look more like that. And this is the same picture with the gate closed, and this is a closed circuit. A closed circuit means on, in case you ever start talking with one of the mechanics and they're you know, helping you, asking you to troubleshoot maybe a problem you're having. Uh, <clears throat> there's the master battery switch, the alternator switch, the clutch switch, and the starter switch. Those are the main ones that you'll be concerned with in the R22. Uh, bus bar. The bus bar is a common source of power for the entire electrical system. Uh, so after the master battery switch, so we'll start with the battery. And on the positive side of the battery, it'll go to the master battery switch. And from there it runs across the solenoid, but it really doesn't go through it. And I'm sorry, there's also a relay right here, which is controlled by the master switch. From there, pretty much heads to the bus bar. 
makes a couple other stops, but there's no other switches on the way. Um, they just kind of touch off to different points that uses that power. The bus bar has several terminals you can think of it as, and this you can think of as as soon as the power hits the bus bar, it goes to all of the terminals on the bus bar. That's where we distribute the rest of the power to all the other accessories in the R22. Um, the fuselage, like I said before, the fuselage is essentially the bus bar for your ground circuit. All the users of the electricity in the aircraft use the chassis as a ground. Electrical users is our next subject. Um, we have the starter, which is a high amperage. That drains the battery pretty quickly, so uh, typically if you end up with a dead battery, it's because you've been trying too long to start it. Uh, the blower fan, which is the heater blower. Um, clutch, the lights, uh, like the dome light, which is the map light, or the nav lights. Um, and incidentally, kind of as a side note, the landing lights are wired through the clutch switch on the dash because Frank Robinson used to leave his landing lights on and he would frequently kill the battery. So on the later models, like ours, most of our helicopters are the Beta 2, it's all wired right through the clutch switch. Um, and you'll see as we do the pre-flight, there's an st extra step you have to take to check the landing lights to make sure that your clutch doesn't start engaging. You'll pull that breaker out. Um, what else we have? The radios and the transponder, instruments and gauges, um, the warning lights incidentally also are on the same circuit as the engine cylinder head temp gauge. So if you read zero on the cylinder head temp gauge during a flight, you know that you're also not getting your warning lights. Um, they're not going to work if something should happen. Uh, you have the tachometers. The clock and the tachometers have a direct gateway to the battery, which bypasses the master. So the master comes off and controls the power to the bus. Um, the clutch and the clock have their own circuit which is unobstructed no matter what you do with the master switch. So it's always going to be trying to draw power off the battery. If, you're, if you have to take um, action in an emergency and shut off your master, this ensures that you still have tachometers which are vital for safe flight. And last but not least, the governor. Last but not least, the governor. Um, Next thing we're, we have on the list is safety components, uh, circuit breakers and fuses. Uh, the R22 has pop-up breakers. Um, they're located right in front of the left seat, just below your knees if you're sitting there. Uh, there is an overload circuit. Through a breaker, it will overheat, and that causes them to pop up, <clears throat> opening that circuit up. After a brief cooldown, you can push the breaker back in to reset it. Breaker style pop-ups cannot be held down to maintain the circuit. If, uh, if you're in flight and you're taking emergency action and you pop a breaker in and it pops back out, holding it down after that won't make the circuit stay closed and make that piece of equipment keep functioning. The breaker still will trip even though the button is down. In order to reset it, you'll have to let go and re-push. Uh, so just get rid of that illusion up front. Over, there's an over voltage relay, the voltage regulator. These two components um, work in tandem to maintain that 14 volts uh, to the bus bar and protect from over voltage which could cause damage. Uh, there's the ammeter and the, and the alternator light. Ammeter shows the flow of current during engine running condition. Positive shows charging. Negative shows use. The system's healthiest when the needle is at center. So on the ammeter, we have basically if this is the gauge to this side will be all positive readings and to this side will be negative readings the best place you always want to see the amateur sit is in the middle after you've just started the aircraft and you're t lifting off and you're checking gauges you might have a little swing to the negative um, no, is that, I'm sorry you might have a little swing to the positive because right now you're throwing a little extra charge to recharge that juice you used up during starting from the starter. Um, electrical system problems and solutions. So an alternator failure. Uh, first indications of this will the amber will show a negative and the alternator light should illuminate. 
your reasons for this are anything from a mechanical failure to a broken belt, um, your voltage regulator or your uh, over voltage could be in protect mode, and the last thing could be if you have a completely dead battery that won't provide even three volts, um, the alternator needs at least that much to throw a charge out and to run the aircraft, so that would kill it too. Uh, solutions to this, turn off your unnecessary components, turn off the alternator switch, wait one second and turn it back on. What this does is it's an attempt to reset that regulator in the over voltage relay. So if that's what it turns out to be, just turning that off for one second and turning it back on, it will try and reset it. Uh, if the lighter amateur is still reading low, you land as soon as practical. Wait within 10 minutes at the very latest, um, within 5 minutes. Although they run through a separate circuit, the tachometers still need battery power to function, so that five minutes gives you time where you still have a tachometer that's working to keep your rotor and your engine RPM within specs. Battery failures. Uh, indication in pre-flight or attempting to start, obviously you're not going to have lights and your instruments aren't going to be working. Um, either that or what you'll get is you'll start to hear the, the starter motor will sound sluggish. Uh, as I said before, the most common reason for the dead battery is trying to start for too long. Um, that was the first reason for that. Another reason is um, you could have the terminals disconnected on the battery if you're not getting anything. Uh, you might have corrosion that's built up between your contacts. Um, solutions for stuff like that with um, a battery is going to be a CFI or get maintenance, go into dispatch and call line service, or I'm sorry, tell dispatch you need maintenance to come out and they'll give you a hand at that. Uh, instruments, tax, warning lights are not working. Reasons for that, you might have a pop breaker. Um, anything other than a pop breaker is going to be like a system failure. So that's going to be, check the breakers first thing. Um, if the breakers are engaged and you're on the ground, same thing, get a CFI or go into dispatch and have them grab a maintenance guy for you. Uh, if the breaker is engaged and you're in flight, revert to the specific emergency procedure from the POH. So whatever's failing, there's a specific procedure in the POH. I'm not going to break all those down this time around, I'm trying to keep it a little bit shorter. But um, So this part would be, I'd move out to the ramp or the hangar to an available aircraft and we would show the battery, the alternator, the breakers, the switches, um, in order to be able to correlate all the things that we're talking about here with you know, reality, what you're going to be thinking about while you're flying, um, and making sure that you understand where the components are, um, why these preventive measures and uh, troubleshooting steps are going to help you. Um, you're going to understand that a lot better as we go through the aircraft. So in conclusion, um, we would do like the completion standards of this would be the lessons complete when the student demonstrates a thorough understanding of R22 electrical systems and basic emergency procedures. Um, for student evaluation questions, it would be, all right, so uh, show me the battery. Um, what's the battery used for? Uh, show me the alternator. What is it used for? Uh, where's the ammeter and what is the ammeter indicating to us which switch must be activated to activate only the tachometers say per se uh, do we have normal fuses in the R22 where how many and what for references for this were uh, the FA rotorcraft flying handbook and our Robinson R22 POH chapter 7 page 8 the diagram and it goes through Page 9, oh, page 9 is the electrical system diagram. Anyways, that about wraps it up. Um, thanks for your time, and I hope it's been educational. It has for me.